Hi guys, um, as promised, um, we thought we'd talk a little bit about hormonal hair growth and do a live treatment. Now, some of you will have seen me do this before, but some of you won't. So we have got the lovely Emma, um, who has agreed to, uh, to be our model today. Now, hormones and hair growth are very closely linked, and particularly with facial hair. One of the reasons I don't really routinely treat male facial hair is because testosterone is so enormously strong and powerful that um, it, it's a very difficult thing to treat. We do treat transgender hair removal because there's some hormonal um, procedures that they go through to start with which can make the hair removal a little bit easier, but it's still quite a, a, a trek for them and it's quite a long job. Um, for women, um, we are very much influenced by um, our sex hormones, so progesterone, oestrogen, and things like um, hormonal changes and hormonal conditions such as polycystic ovaries. So um, things like pregnancy, perimenopause, menopause, all those kind of things really impact the growth of all body hair, but particularly facial hair. Quite often people will come to me in the first instance complaining of facial hair, having had children. Oh yeah, I didn't have this before and suddenly I've got it and I can sympathise, that happened to me too. So um, it's a very, you know, well, it's a very challenging thing because Body hair tends to respond a little bit more predictably, but facial hair can be more challenging. And without going into too much medical detail, Emma has agreed to let me say that she has had a hormonal change recently. There's been a bit of an issue. She's had a bit of a hormonal blip and we have been treating her for facial hair, but she's definitely noticed a change in recent weeks. And I don't think we've treated very recently. When did we last treat? Can you remember? It's been a little it's while, been hasn't it? Yeah, we have so it's been practice. probably six, eight weeks since we've yeah, treated easy. at least. So, okay, so it's been at least six, eight weeks. We normally treat sort of four to six weekly for faces. And in the last couple of weeks, since the problems that she's had, she's definitely noticed a change. So um, we do a treatment anyway, and we're gonna do that today. Um, but obviously the, it's been sort of noticeable that, that it needs doing now more than it might otherwise have done because of the hormones. Um, so I'm gonna show you a little bit. We haven't shaved the area so you can see. I'm gonna try and dig out your original picture as well, Emma, in a minute so we can show exactly uh, the difference that we've got here. I might try and get a still from this as well so we can do a bit of a comparison. Um, so the beauty of this um, is, because although we've had some lovely weather, I know that Emma's not had a lot of sun exposure in the last couple of weeks. So even if she had picked up some sun a couple of weeks ago when it was lovely, I'm not concerned that there's too much sun on her skin because she's not been in the sun for the last couple of weeks. We also have um, another laser. So the laser I'm gonna be using for this is, you will have seen this before, if you've ever watched my videos before, it's the amazing, brilliant, pain-free Soprano Ice. I also have a Luminous M22, and that's very good for hair removal in some instances. Now, 90% of my hair removal is done on the Soprano, but sometimes for facial hair, and particularly for fairer colours, finer hair, the, Supra the Luminous can be quite useful, but I cannot treat you with that if you've got a tan. So it's one of those things we assess everybody when they come in, and the hormonal sort of side is very important. We need to know about that. Myrena coils or change of contraception is another one that I didn't mention before that can influence hair growth on the face. Now, it can influence it in, in sort of for the positive or the negative. Sometimes people notice improvement on some of those occasions, like if they become pregnant or when they go through menopause, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and if they sort of change of contraception and things like that, they can actually notice an improvement. More often than not, it tends to make facial hair worse. So I'm going to uh, introduce you to Emma if you've not met her before. And they say hello if you have. So here's Emma. If Hi. I can get you to lift your chin up for me. Now I'm going to see what you can see. In fact, I'm going to turn the camera. Oh, it doesn't like me rotating. Hold on. Let's see if I can do it this way. So can you see under Emma's chin here? Some quite long hair. Turn your chin towards me a little bit. That's brilliant. So these dark hairs are still, they don't feel very coarse, but they are quite thick for facial hair. So it's saying the worst bit appears to be this strip down the front of the throat. Turn your head back that way for me. Down the sides here is sort of quite soft, but dark hair. Have you noticed this get worse recently? I think it, this has picked up a bit yeah. again, and that's due to these hormonal changes. The softer stuff can be more difficult. We can improve it and sort of certainly temporarily remove it. We might need to use the luminous to give it a bit of welly after the summer, maybe sort of as we go into, into sort of autumn and winter. I find the corners, so this is a very dark one, and she's very kindly just left this <laughs> for me to, to view. I find what I call the corners, so the corners of the chin and the sort of corners of the lip are often the worst affected areas and can be the most stubborn as well. 
So what we're going to do is just switch that round so we can see and hopefully we're going to be able to get what we want. You will notice it will get a little bit noisier in a minute. I'll speak up when we do that, but the laser itself obviously has to be switched on. One day I'll get a proper microphone. And stuff. So all we're going to do for this is just whip our little clippers over. Facial hair can be very debilitating for people. It can be very embarrassing. It can be, um, it can really stop people doing things. It can make people not want to go out. People grow their hair to hide their face and all sorts of things um, with facial hair because it, it's sort of culturally not very acceptable for women to have hair on their faces. So while I'm always keen to try and help people sort of see the best in themselves and not sort of try not to let it rule their lives, actually we can improve this and it can make a real difference to people. Um, so obviously one of my key things is to help improve self-confidence. This can be one way of doing that. And I love when people have been coming to me for a while and suddenly they have their hair cut into a short style that they've never had because they're not hiding their facial hair anymore and things like that. It can, it can really change people's lives. I've had someone get a partner for the first time in years because she's not embarrassed to go out anymore and things like that. And that means so much to me. Okay, so. For any body hair area, we would shave the area before the treatment. Because um, what we don't want to do is heat up hair on the surface of the skin. Some of you will have seen me do this before on lives. Um, we don't need the bit on the surface. We only need the bit under the surface. So. It does feel a bit weird for a few days if you're not used to it. There's a bit of a taboo about women shaving their faces and it is a bit of a showstopper sometimes. People don't like to think that they can't wax or pluck anymore, which you can't because we need the hair and the hair follicle. Um, and the thoughts for some women of actually shaving can be a step too far. But once the first couple of treatments are out of the way and you get used to the feeling after it for a few days, actually you'll see the progress very quickly and it becomes less of an issue but it can be a real show. I've had people not want to start treatment because of that, but we do look after you. Okay, so to protect the eyes, we use complete blackout goggles for the face. We use goggles like these for any other area, but if you hold those and put them over your eyes for me. Hello, everybody who's watching. I have, I'm not getting names up except Emma. Hi, Emma. Um, if anybody has have any questions if you want any, to me to answer anything as we go through please do ask and I will try to answer as we go along and if I can't do that I will answer at the end underneath um, because I will post the video back up so if you get any questions do ask me okay so if you can turn it towards your left side for me so the only product we use on the skin is a clear gel for contact it's very cold this is the worst bit so this doesn't need to be painful in any way. Um, Emma needs to tell me if she can start to feel it get too warm. So the laser head is chilled, which keeps the skin cooler than the hair follicles. can give me a thumbs up if you can hear me that would be great because obviously I'm conscious that the laser is a little bit noisy you can hear me give me a thumbs up and we'll start the treatment Emma needs to tell me if it feels more than comfortably warm no thumbs up does that mean you can't hear me right it's cold to start with yeah, there we go got a thumbs up I think that's Emma thank you Emma Okay, so how does that feel at the moment, Emma? Fine, absolutely fine. So it's quite warm and massagey, which is great. It's very comfortable. Doesn't need to be painful at all. Because the way the Soprano works, it's a gradual build-up of energy rather than the zap, zap, zap you get with other types. And actually the, the one, our other laser, the Luminous, which is very efficient for hair removal. Um, but it doesn't promise to be pain-free, whereas this one does. So... And the beauty of this is we can load energy in. We're not restricted to how many times we can go over the area without overcooking you.
And there is a sort of higher setting on this as well to do individual shots if we feel that we need to, which I often do on faces. I'm more cautious this time of year so we don't overheat people's skin. The sun exposure thing is very important with laser hair removal. Um, you can have a tan with the Soprano, but the sun exposure can't have been sort of current recent in the last couple of weeks. It's very important to allow the skin to settle before um, we treat, and that's so if you were going on holiday, I'd treat you two weeks before or two weeks after. So uh, as you can see, it's just gradually building up that energy over the hair follicles. Okay, so that's the, she's just told me to stop, which means it's starting to warm up. I'll bring the heat down a little. There's no need for this to be painful. By turning the heat down, doesn't make it less effective. It just takes a few seconds longer to treat. Is that better? Where there's darker hairs, it can be a bit zappier. Warm is fine, it doesn't need to be painful. People worry that they've got to be brave and grit their teeth through it, but you really don't need to. And that's why we can treat darker skin tones. I have an awful lot of um, Asian Indian clients. Lift your chin up and come back to the middle a little bit. Um, just a bit more gel. Because it's pain free on darker skin tones as well as lighter ones. And we can even treat African Caribbean black skin tones pain free as well which is brilliant because darker skin tones are much more prone to burning and uh, pigmentation so we're able to treat them quite gently without causing them any problems but also getting them a good result so like I said I get a lot of women come in saying they've had children or they think they're perimenopausal or they're menopausal and suddenly they're starting to grow hair in places that they haven't before so we're looking at facial hair we're looking you know, sort of down the neck, sometimes even the chest, the nipples, um, the belly, all these places are very sort of hormonally driven. I mean, hair growth is a hormonal uh, drive anyway. The body can be very determined sometimes to put hair back in various places. So we just have to keep on top of the hair cycles and just convince the body it really doesn't need to put it there anymore. But hormones do play a big part. And uh, I can't control your hormones. I can give a little bit of advice on, on some things. Nutrition is very important, rest status is very important, good sleep patterns, which can be difficult if you've got children or you're having hot flushes because um, you're menopausal or something like that. Come this way for me a little bit. But uh, there are a few things that can be done to improve that. As I said, we just use a cold gel. What will happen over the next sort of 10 days or so this hair that's still in the hair follicles will grow out and fall out and uh, it takes a couple of weeks for the next cycle to start coming through. It's great for legs and bikini lines on holiday because you don't have to um, you don't have to shave while you're on holiday, you have the treatment, two weeks later you're safe for some exposure and that's the point that all the hair falls out as well. So great for bikini lines. But ultimately, from a self-confidence point of view, facial hair is the, is the key um, thing that often brings women into me in the first place and then they go on to have other areas done when they realise how fabulous it is. If we struggle, if there's any reason we're not getting the results we would expect, um, we will try whatever we can, we will investigate why it's not doing what we would expect. And uh, sometimes, like I said, we would move you across to the luminous as well to change the wavelength. Um, and to just adjust the treatment that we're doing a little bit. Come back up to the middle and then come right down the um, So we do have several tools at our disposal to make sure we get a really good result. Um, and I will always assess you personally every time you have a treatment because it's important I understand you and your hormones and your hair growth to make sure we get the best results. Um, one of the things I often say as well is if you do choose to go somewhere to have laser hair removal, please make sure you're getting the qualified medical practitioner. There's no regulation around laser treatments, any laser treatments at all. Anybody can buy a laser and treat you um, on their own with no medical supervision. Um, I am a registered nurse, so I am, and I am accountable to an official body. So if I was to do something wrong or untoward, I am still answerable to an official body, whereas anybody can buy a laser and use it with no medical training at all and uh, one of the things I have done over a couple of years, sort of nearly six years I've been doing this, 
is um, refer a couple of people back to their GPs for things I thought were a bit suspicious on their skin, and they've both gone on to have those removed as suspicious moles. So please make sure the person you're using has got a bit of a medical background, does understand the skin, and knows what they're looking at, and knows the technology behind the lasers and how to, uh, how to use that and adjust it where it's needed. There's a lot of uh, lasers out there. You do get what you pay for to a point. Make sure you get a quality system as well. Turn your head towards me now. Okay, so I could do this much quicker, um, but because facial hair can be quite stubborn, it is very hormonal, it is um, difficult to get on top of sometimes, really loading the energy through to make sure that the hair follicles all heat up to be destroyed. Each treatment takes out one cycle of hair growth. So it's really important that each hair gets the best opportunity to be destroyed. Sometimes we can damage hair follicles and uh, sometimes that ends up leading, leaving you with softer, finer hair, which somewhere like the legs and the underarms can be great because what comes back is much less obtrusive. But we want to make sure we destroy as many of those active live hair follicles as possible. All of our consultations are free. It's always important to me that uh, we know exactly what's going on with that client, make sure it's suitable before we commit them to anything. I'll always be very honest about um, what I think is going to happen and the likely results. And um, if I don't think it's suitable for you, I will tell you, or I will do a patch test and send you away to see what happens. If I think you're going to respond and everything looks fine, then I can treat 24 hours after a patch test. Although diary depending, we're booking quite a long way ahead at the moment. Come back to the middle for me. So top lip can be a bit tricky. She'll end up with it up her nose and that gel goes everywhere. Don't tighten too much. I haven't trimmed this. Top lips I tend to find are the most stubborn and come winter time we will probably take Emma through to the Luminous and give it a few zaps. Emma's got quite dark skin tone actually, um, so we would be more cautious because we don't want to heat up the skin as well. Is that okay? So with various things we can do, and I'm going to put an attachment on here in a minute so you can see how we can get to small areas. I tend to do the top lip with this one first, then we come back with the tip so we can get really close to the nose, close to the lip line. Do you get much stuff underneath that bottom lip in the middle? Yeah. We can get close to all these small areas. I'm taking quite a long time over this, but that's because I want to get the best results. I can't overdose her on this. I could do an abridged version for you, but actually you can see exactly what I put into this and how much time I take and, and why I do. So this bit's nearly done, and then I'll swap the tip over and we'll do a little bit more on the top lip. So bear with me just one second. Um, machines have this. I don't know if you can see, let me come forward with it. It's a very small tip. It's designed to get into small places. I can actually do inside noses, I can do inside ears, um, I can do eyebrows, we can get rid of the hair here, and I can even do a little bit of shaping. I'm a nurse, not a beauty therapist, you have to shape them and I'll zap the hairs for you. Um, but it can, uh, if you've got very bushy dark eyebrows, it can be brilliant for that. So we're just going to, so this is a slower pulse on this. And it's really good for just loading into the areas, getting right close up to the nose, close to the lip line. And uh, 
all the little difficult to reach bits. I've also used this for going around tattoos before because you can't laser over a tattoo because it will burn. So it's uh, really good. If someone's got a tattoo or within their legs, I tape the tattoo, do as close as I can with the main diode and then do edges with this without getting too close, but it means we can just get rid of a little bit more. So I'm just going to tidy this up and turn that off and you can probably hear me again better now. So that's a full treatment for what I would call full face and full face includes the neck as we need to. Sometimes I might come further up the cheeks if needed as well um, and we can do everything from just a top lip, just a chin but it can make such a difference to people and you will notice the difference with the hormones as well. So. If you're currently pregnant, um, stand by for a few months' time. You might notice hair that you've not had before. Turn your head to me. And uh, it can be treated. It can really help with self-confidence. So if anybody's got any questions, I've not seen any ping up, but I'm not sure if I'm going to the way the screen is. So ask the questions below. I will come back and answer them. Come back to you here. And Eva, can you just say, was that comfortable? Absolutely fine. Yeah, it was quite relaxing. I feel like I've had a mini facial. Yeah, it is quite relaxing, it is quite massagey as well, and people do seem to say their skin tone improves a bit as well, because well, anything that puts heat into the skin will help stimulate collagen, um, it just helps with skin tone and texture, that's a happy side effect, uh, but, um, but otherwise that's a treatment, if you've got any problems with hormones and hormonal hair, do give us a shout, come and have a chat with me, and ask me any questions you want, there's no obligation to come in and have a chat, and um, hopefully you know, we can help you and help with your self confidence, and we'll see you back again here soon. See you later, can you press off for me?